Hi! As promised, here's another look at this image I mentioned in the Saturn video. Find that video here if you haven't seen it already. As I said, I was going to go into a lot more detail as there's so much to talk about in just this one image. So firstly, to give you a sense of scale, this image is about 400,000 kilometers across from edge to edge. I think you'll agree that this is one of the most beautiful images that NASA has ever released. In truth though, this image has also been enhanced to make fainter objects brighter in comparison to the very bright objects around them. NASA says this image, as you see it, is now a balance between reality and beauty. But know that nothing has been added at all, only brightened. Now normally this outer bright blue ring is not visible on most pictures of Saturn. The reason we see it now is because the Sun is directly behind Saturn and being in the planet's shadow means fainter objects become more apparent. The blue color of the ring is due to diffraction in much the same process which makes the sky blue. The particles in this ring are fueled by this little 500 km wide moon here, Enceladus. This moon has a lot of geysers shooting particles into space. Captured by Saturn's gravity, these particles remain in orbit and form the E-ring. In fact, you can see these geysers blasting jets of particles even in this picture. A close-up of Enceladus looks something like this. Seen in ultraviolet, visible and infrared lights, it's an incredibly pretty moon with relatively few surface craters, which means it must be active with water volcanism to renew the surface. In fact, it's covered in a very thick layer of ice, which makes it one of the most reflective objects in the solar system. These water or cryo-volcanoes blast about 200 kilograms a second into space at speeds of over 1,600 kilometers per hour. It's thought that the liquid water ocean is under the ice, particularly near the South Pole, and it's under enormous pressure, hence why these cracks are formed and water is escaping. Also in the vicinity of the E-ring are the moons Tethys and Mimas. Tethys is the biggest moon of Saturn in this picture, being over 1,000 kilometers across. It's not too colorful as you can see, and has huge impact craters and rift valleys. The biggest crater, in particular, makes it look like a giant eyeball. And the biggest fault line is a massive 2,000 kilometers across. Like Enceladus, it's also covered in ice. And this ice makes it the second brightest moon of Saturn. Mimas, on the other side of the picture here, can be seen creating a long shadow through Saturn's E-ring. This is the moon that has been nicknamed the Death Star due to its similar appearance. It's about 400 kilometers across and is as well thought to be made of mostly of water ice. All right, let's zoom out again so we can see the rings of Saturn. The next closest ring to Saturn after the E-ring is the Pliny ring. It is very faint, but if I zoom in, it's this band through the center of the screen here. It's named after the tiny Pliny moon, which the Cassini probe actually discovered. Pliny itself can't be seen in this image as it's less than three kilometers across, but it's thought this ring is the residual remains of meteorite impacts with the moon. The next ring is easier to see, the G ring. And the next is the Janus or the Epimetheus ring. Like the Pliny ring, it is made up of the particles which have been knocked off the two co-orbital moons, Janus and Epimetheus. While still very tiny moons, they are big enough to be seen in this image. Janus is here, and Epimetheus is here. Janus is about 200 kilometers across, and Epimetheus only 130 kilometers across. And when I say they are co-orbital moons, I really mean that. Janus's mean orbital radius is roughly 50 kilometers less than Epimetheus, but this could change every time the moons catch up with each other, which happens about once every four years. They last switch positions in 2006. The next ring we see is the bright F ring which houses the two shepherd moons, Prometheus and Pandora. I spent some time already discussing Prometheus in the Saturn video, so 
so I won't do it here. But here you can see it tucked away just inside the F ring. Pandora is right on the other side. Pandora is slightly smaller than Prometheus at 81 kilometers across, but is found on the outside of the F ring instead of the inside. Prometheus and Pandora can also get close to each other, and whenever that happens, they perturb each other's orbit. They are called shepherd moons because they keep the F ring narrowly confined, sometimes even stealing some of the material themselves when they get too close. To finish talking about the rings, we have the A, B, C and D rings. If you do want to find out more information about that, again have a look at the other Saturn video. Finally, let's look at some of the other planets we can see here. Yes, even though they are millions of kilometers away, we can still see some of the inner solar system's planets. Mars is just above the E ring here. Next is Venus, situated between the Peleni and G ring. And finally, here we are on Earth, these bluish few pixels. That pixel jutting off the side of Earth is actually our neighbor, the Moon. Well, thank you so much for watching. I really hope you learned something today and that you enjoyed watching this video. This is one of my favorite pictures that NASA's ever released, so I really enjoyed making it. I've still got a few other videos in the process of being made at the moment, so be sure to subscribe to check those out. And if you are new to the channel, I've made a lot of other videos quite similar to this which you may enjoy. And I'll see you next time.